episode 85. Hello everyone and welcome to Balkan Shafa podcast. My name is Magdalena and this is my little mascot Damarat. Hello. <laughs> He's usually chilling somewhere in the background. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so so much for coming back. Uh, it always makes me happy. And if you're a new viewer, this is a podcast mostly about knitting, but also other crafts appear here as well, such as spinning, embroidery, watercolor. Mm. So yeah, I am originally from Poland, but I live here in Switzerland in a little town of Adlisviel near uh, Zurich. And uh, I'm a yarn dyer, if you don't know. Uh, I have Wolfenschafe yarns and the link to my shop is always in the video description down there and yeah let's start with the exciting stuff but first as always a sip of tea because yeah uh, tea is my fuel basically <laughs> and today it's uh, Lipton tea vanilla caramel so exciting stuff is of course the giveaway that the most generous and talented Ellie of Skandir Knits um, has donated for our podcast its uh, collection of colorwork sock patterns. Uh, the collection is called Socke Lester and I have asked you to post on uh, in a thread in our Ravelry group, Wolfram Schaffer Podcast Ravelry group, and an answer to the question about your favorite yarn and the project that you you are knitting with it or you've knitted in the past. So thank you so much to everyone who participated. It was so uh, interesting to look at your entries and learn about many new yarns. So it was fun. So now I will go to the uh, ran random.org and and I will generate a number of a post. And the number is number seven, which means, which means, seven. Oh, it's Lia Danek, uh, Kasia, uh, who posted about her favorite yarn that is uh, Jilly uh, from Dream in Color, and she made a beautiful Samela shawl out of it and the other one it was I was so touched because it's Lika's fingering uh, from my Wolfenschafe yarns so I will hope to uh, post her um, her project here so you, you can see them and yeah uh, congrats Kasia uh, I will tell Ellie to send you the, the bundle and I hope you will enjoy knitting socks Colorwork socks. I have never knitted uh, colorwork socks myself yet, so maybe that's something I will do in the future as well. Exciting! Um, so, uh, yeah, I have a lot of projects to show you this week because recently I've been working almost on everything. There is only one languishing project that I haven't worked on <laughs> in ages and it's uh, my fingerless mitts um, I should have somewhere here I just yeah I have some DPNs on the floor right now we'll collect them later so yeah uh, I only have this one mitten and I knitted this in one evening because it's from bulky yarn and I cannot seem to cast on the other one. It's horrible. <laughs> it's the second mitten uh, syndrome and yeah, one day, one day I will. I'm not giving up yet. But other than that, I've been working a little bit on everything. So, um, so yeah, let's start with the socks that are closest to being completed. And these are, oh, yeah. Oh, come on. The yarn got tangled. Surprising. Yeah, it's this pair of socks. And I'm knitting them 
from uh, Jeans Yarn Strong Socks in the Christmas colorway uh, Naughty or Nice and it's this gorgeous gorgeous self-striping and I'm making contrasting toes out of a Woolen Vine Yarns Blitzed in the Neptunia base uh, but not contrasting heels because I don't have enough of the Neptunia left I will, what I have left, I will use for the cuffs, for the ribbing, actually, for the ribbing. And look at those heels. I think it's great how the, um, the change of the stripe happened exactly at the half of the heel. Isn't that awesome? And it's the same for the other sock. It's, of course, different color repeats, but yeah, there is the red and there is the green, exactly in the middle. I love it. So yeah, this is how much yarn I have left and it will be enough to, to finish uh, the cuff. And, and yeah, what else I can say about this yarn? So. Some episodes ago I told you that I wasn't knitting on these socks partly because I got annoyed with this cake uh, So you can see it's messy. So there was there is a uh, at the beginning basically there was a moment when I got like a strand of yar yarn stick out of the middle because I'm knitting one sock from the outside end of the cake and the other one from the inside end of the cake so I just I can't do anything about it because they are together, all attached. What happens when you're knitting from one cake? <laughs> so I thought that sooner or later, hopefully sooner, uh, the strand will just be pulled out of, of the uh, center and it will straighten up in your regular strand of yarn and it won't annoy me um, in later knitting. But I'm almost done with these socks and <laughs> And this strand is still there. It's just very, a very, um, it was very much on the out, like, outside part of the center, I think. And it's so annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I'm almost done, so I'm like, meh, what else? And I'm knitting on my Chaogu needles. These are um, 2.5 millimeters, my go-to uh, for socks, 1.5 US size. And I'm knitting them for myself, so uh, 56 stitches. And the fish lips kiss heel, just in case you're wondering what this is. <laughs> so yeah, uh, these are close to being done and I'm knitting on them mostly while watching, watching a movie with Gleb. And then my EYF slash Harry Potter socks. Well, these have one heel done. Because I cannot do heels when I'm watching a movie because I, I will definitely mess them up. So there was one day when I did all three heels. So two heels from the previous socks I showed you and one heel of these. And then I did not have enough time to make the fourth one. So. These will have to wait I, I t until I have time to be focused on them. But yeah, again, Fish Lips Kiss Heel, 56 stitches. Uh, these are higher, higher sharps and 2.5 millimeter needles, US size 1.5. And this is Knitting Goddess. I should have a. Oh, yeah. Is it? No, it's not a tag. The tag is somewhere. Somewhere. But the colorway is uh, Octarine and it's Terry Pratchett inspired. I love it. Although they look more blue on the camera than in real life. They are more green. And yeah, as you can see here, this uh, on this heel, because there are like you're doing shorter rows. Uh, the repeats got got taller, but I don't mind. I find it really pretty. So, yay! 
I like them a lot and I still have really a lot of yarn left. Look at that. Yeah. So these are my socks for this week. And now in this beautiful wool and vine yarns bag is living my other project which should be finished already because it's a quick knit really but I've been doing everything so in the end I did not finish stuff so I've been showing this to you last week uh, I have a left uh, mitt from uh, yeah let's zoom in so this is Something w Wicked Mitts by Kristen Leder from Wulen Vine Yarns and Yarngasm Podcast. And this is how one of them looks like. So they are, uh, there is a difference between left and right at some point. Of course, except for the thumb, I mean the, the pattern here. But anyway, anyway, look, they are so beautiful. And I think the... The yarn is complementing the pattern really well. Of course, the ends are not hidden. <laughs> and this is where I am with the other one. Ta -da. So yeah. There's a unicorn. I made, uh, the, this is the stitch marker that I made myself and I love it. So. So yeah, I'm using a Chaogu, what size is this? 3.5, which is US size 4. And the yarn is Swedish Pint. Um, 70% blue faced Leicester, 20% silk and 10% cashmere in the DK weight and the colorway is Winter Rosen, so Winter Roses. And yeah, I'm loving this colorway. Look at that. Oh, I love purples. So yeah, it is a really quick knit. If you're interested, check out Kristen's pattern. And yeah, it's getting warm here, you guys. Spring is finally here. But yeah, still drinking tea. Next up, again, <laughs> this project. It's Fairy Hill Shawl by Helen Stewart. And rats, I'm again mid row. <laughs> I was thinking today that I should finish the row before I started recording, but then of course I forgot. So sorry about that. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle of the row, but maybe it will be even easier to show you the shawl when it's folded in two. So yeah, I'm at the 80%. Slowly but surely getting there and I cannot tell how happy those two colorways together make me. Can you see them properly? Yeah, look at that. So this is Woolen Vine Yarns uh, Wilderness in Fig Bash colorway and this is uh, Eden Cottage Yarns, Titus 4 Ply in the Algae colorway. So I think they play together so so well. Also Fig Bash plays really well with my project bag. <laughs> I think it's a great match here. So hoping to finish it soon but since I've been working a little bit on everything uh, <laughs> The progress is small. But yes, I said 80% and I'm knitting on my Carbons Interchangeables 4mm needles US size 6, I believe. So yeah, I cannot wait really to wear it, even though it's getting very warm, so 
<laughs> I don't know if I will have much use out of it, but but actually in May I'm going to a to a wedding ceremony of my cousin. I'm flying to Poland, so who knows? Maybe I could wear this. It looks very festive. And next up, I still have stuff for you guys. Uh, I wanted to tell to brag that I have finally, finally um, woven in the ends of my cozy memories blanket. Of course, it's not finished. It's, it's just for ages now I haven't hidden a single end in this blanket, so it will like <laughs> it had fringe <laughs> fringes around. But uh, yeah, uh, at the moment. Oh, I'm using this hook by Andy. It's 3.5 millimeters and I'm crocheting out of um, mostly fingering weight yarns but not only. I have once I have some sport weights as well and some of my hand spun which are not exactly identified <laughs> but are more or less fingering. So yeah, finally this has all the ends hidden and it's grown because it's when I put it like this when I put it like this from my throat it, when it hangs it goes this close to my knees so it's still a lot of work but but I'm loving my blanket it's it's big I think it's nothing compared in size to Emilie's uh, from Arctic Knit Knitting. Hi, Emilie! Uh, blanket. Hers is huge, really, but yeah, anyway, um, this is growing. I've been, recently, I've been... What's that? <laughs> Something fell again. So, recently I've been um, Skyping a lot with some friends from abroad and I would talk to them, I would ha have my headphones in my ears I, and I would just crochet and crochet, so that's how the blanket has grown. And today I was again Skyping with a friend and this happened. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I really had a lot of ends to weave in. Look at them. <laughs> just, yeah, it's a ball of yarn. So I got rid of that and I feel like it's spring cleaning, something like that. <laughs> spring cleaning the, the ends. So now um, I'm not yet done with knitting, but I think I will start uh, with yarn acquisitions because it's very connected to my next project. And those of you who follow me on Instagram probably know that Recently I've purchased some of the Jameson and it's Jameson's of Shetland, Shetland Spindrift yarn. So these are my colorways. This is my beautiful clay bowl, yarn bowl that my friend Basha made for me. Yeah, she made it herself and I love it. It's yeah, it's actually blue inside. I, I think I've been showing this previously on the podcast, but right now I'm using this for these three uh, skeins. And there's an oak leaf and another. I love it. I have a soft spot for beautiful ceramics. <laughs> That's why I also love Japanese ceramics so much. So yeah, so the project is... This... It's a Blofiel sweater by lovely Ellie from Skandier Knits. And I'm not very advanced in this project yet. I have only just started the yoke. But yeah, it's very exciting. These are my floats. My floats! <laughs> Show me your floats. And yeah, it's it's a lovely pattern. It's my first ever a colorwork yoke sweater 
and yeah, the, the yarn, the yarn. As I said, it's Jameson's of Shetland uh, Spindrift, and this is my palette. I've been thinking, when I was choosing the color, I was thinking, um, what palette should I choose? Because I knew I wanted it to be one color, but different shades. So I've been thinking either purples or greens, or blues and I was sitting in front of the computer and and I couldn't decide then my son came over and he was like oh mommy let's pick this color and this color and this color and then he listed all <laughs> he showed like pointed his finger at the all of the colors that would be great to have all the colors right but in the end um, I ordered these three with this one is my main color and it's uh, the Lagoon colorway. Then this is uh, the contrasting color, it's Prussian blue and this is Cloud. So yeah, I think they look really nice together and they are building this yoke. Here I have those flowers and with the swatch with swatching what for this sweater it was fun so um ellie in the pattern she suggests that you should do swatches for the main color and for uh, like for the body uh, separately and for color work separately because people tend to knit um tighter with color work so since I'm still a beginner at colorway way, way work, <laughs> uh, can't talk. So since I'm a beginner at color work still, of course I did the swatching and I couldn't really get the gauge because I was taking bigger and bigger needles and it just was still so tight. So I ended up having uh, three millimeter needles for the body. I think it's something like US size three. 2.5 for the ribbing, US size 1.5 and for the color work I have 4 millimeter needles which is US size 6. Imagine that! And I'm knitting using uh, using the needles that I bought and then lost at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival <laughs> and then found them again so it's great. So these are 60 centimeters 32 inches or something like that uh, anyway um, or 24 the circumference you use for sweater basic for sweaters basically and the, these are chow goose so yeah they're nice and what else did I want to say so the color work part seems a bit see-through see but then I look at the body it also is kind of see-through um, and I heard that this yarn is supposed to like be a bit bigger once it's, it's washed it's, that it blooms so I hope that's what will happen because yeah if I if I had smaller needles the gauge will be too small so Fingers crossed, I don't have to frog at all. <laughs> I'm a bit stressed about that. But let's hope for the best. So, I, I'm i not sure if I will have enough of the yarn, but I still haven't decided exactly whether I want full sleeves. Because if you know me, you know I do not favor long sleeves because they annoy me. <laughs> Usually when I'm at home and I'm doing stuff, I, I pull them up anyway. And when I'm out, outside, I get too hot and then I pull up the sleeves anyway. So I prefer like three quarters sleeves. So it's possible I will have enough. So because I bought eight balls of this yarn and this is uh, 25 grams per skein so very small and two skeins of each of contrasting color so yeah we'll see how it goes and this is my other cute stitch marker see that i love this leaf so i also made made this one a long time ago and finally 
Finally, my last project, it's not knitting anymore and it uh, appeared on the podcast, it has appeared on the podcast before. It's my embroidery project, it's cross stitch and it's, yeah, it's taking ages even though it's, I bought uh, this cloth for beginners with big holes and thick yarn uh, or thread, I should say. But yeah, <laughs> I'm progressing really slowly, but I find this so beautiful. It's a pattern I found on some uh, somewhere on the internet, but I'm so sorry I lost the address. I only have this printout and I'm marking what I've done so far. And the page is called Strana Moms, which means... Uh, the land of mums, <laughs> of mummies, of mothers. So I suppose it's some kind of crafting page. And and yeah, it's it's just a free pattern I found on the internet, and it's a very traditional uh, Slavic embroidery. It's also similar a bit to Scandinavian patterns, I think. You can find it in um, embro traditional embroideries of many Slavic countries. And yeah, I find it, you know, it's so um, minimalistic. It's very traditional, and but very minimalistic and, and I just love it. It's beautiful. So we have this lady here and two birds. I think I will skip this part and maybe these small things here. I will be doing this and the birds and of course the lady. So yeah, this is where I am. And here, yeah, uh, I will be doing this 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 corner later because it's just that's where my how you call this uh, embroidery ring maybe <laughs> uh, is at the moment. So I'm still a beginner at cross stitch. So I'm I'm learning how to. Um, in which order I should do uh, the stitches to make them effective, to, to like save the thread, do it effectively. But yeah, um, this is where I am, I'm loving it. Don't know where I will finish it, I don't want to pressure myself to finish it because it's not something I will wear or anything. I will probably frame it and put it on the wall. But yeah, it's... it's, it's Fun. When I was uh, in elementary school, I would do a lot of those. Um, it was half cross stitch, so only uh, not like this, but only like this. So the picture was created by slanted lines, diagonal lines, and uh, I would buy those uh, ready um, patterns that would have. There was the cloth with the picture printed out on it and then it would have like you know the palette on the border and you would just choose the threads for the project and then i would make it i i did a, quite a lot of them i would do some roses there was some a picture with like japanese style with a cherry blossom and the pagoda there like a temple in the background i remember some swans as well yeah i would I, I would do them a lot but never did i do a cross stitch and without the pattern too i mean without the printed out pattern because here obviously i do have a pattern <laughs> so yeah uh, finally i think this is it for crafting this week uh, i will be chatting a bit about our easter and and the hike that we had yesterday because it was finally warm and sunny so if you care please stick around with me and if not well thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again soon and yeah so my life in general segment uh, my parents and my sister came for easter uh, visited here just for a few days they arrived on friday uh, afternoon and they left Monday morning. They wanted to stay longer but their flight was cancelled and 
yeah, they had to leave earlier. Anyway, it was it was still fun. Uh, there was a lot of preparations because we're pretty traditional with our holidays, so a lot of baking and cooking and cleaning before the holidays. So it was very busy. I I couldn't do almost anything else um, except for maybe swatching for my um, Blofjell's uh, sweater. And yeah, um, we, st <laughs> we still have some cake left. Can you imagine? We, we are still eating cake and there is still some uh, meat left in the free freezer so we can defrost it later and eat it because yeah a lot of food, even though there were not so many of us here, but yeah. Um, Stasia was the sweetest, he was helping me with my traditional lemon and almond pie that I bake every year for Easter, so he really wanted to be included in the process, so he was helping me with preparing the dough and um, uh, squeezing the lemon and peeling the lemon skin and everything. I was so impressed. It was so cute. <laughs> mm. What else? Oh, uh, we of course made, as every year, the painted eggs. I did, as last year, I made my eggs in traditional patterns that I found on, on the internet, traditional uh, Polish patterns that are, well, mostly geometrical and this year, for a change, I used a different different technique because last year I tried the most traditional way of using melted beeswax and applied it with a pin that I would put in the flame and in the wax and on the egg and then to the wax, uh, no, to the flame, wax, egg, flame, wax, egg. It took ages. It, three eggs took me three hours last year. So this year I had this idea, oh again I don't have this liquid with me, but there is this watercolor um, masking fluid that you use to save white spaces on the picture. And I thought if it works for watercolor paper maybe it will work for the egg, for the, the eggshell. So I just painted the uh, patterns on the eggs with this fluid, then dyed the eggs and it worked pretty well. So I will... I think I, I put a um, picture on the Instagram of them, but yeah, I will put some more here so you can see if you haven't seen. And this year it took me... three eggs took me an hour and a half instead. So, hey, that's better! It's 50% more efficient! <laughs> Mm, and yesterday, as I said, we had a hike uh, because finally it's warmer and we went to Zilwald, which is very close to our place. We went by car, so it's like seven minutes drive or something. And then we left the car and we, we went up a bit. So we were climbing until there is a spot for... Um, you can have a bonfire there or a picnic. So... Um, we did not take anything for like um, roasting. <laughs> we just had we took food for like regular picnic, and we had a great time. It was very nice. Of course, at some point Stasha got tired, so he got annoying, but that's how it is. But I really loved how the forest looks like right now. There are so many beautiful uh, flowers, like anemones, or. Uh, periwinkles are there and also loads and loads of forest primroses and there are a lot of beech trees there but they are they don't have any leaves yet so they are like naked trees but uh, on the ground there are like fields of wild garlic so everything down there is green out from the leaves of the white garlic. So you'd have this green ground and then uh, naked trees um, and it was very beautiful. So so yeah, I really enjoyed that part. And finally we could go out, be outside and listen to bird songs. It was, it was nice for a change because Easter was horrible. It was raining all the time. So we couldn't really enjoy 
uh, the outside. And yeah, this is it for this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. If you like my channel, please hit, uh, hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. I will be always grateful for that and uh, I wish you the uh, very crafty time and I will see you next time. Bye!